And as we can all see, we're sitting here now with a two million dollar approximate debt that's come up because of nobody taking action when it should have been action taken when it was made about of the system and we could have made the financial arrangement for it. And we didn't. Ms. Jordan sent Mr. Thornton an email saying that she knows that if he is not, this is not worth baiting, but I can read it worth baiting. I got it. Say that she knew if he knew something wrong, that she would have, uh, he would have done something about it and contacted uh, some of the council about it. He read it, sent his email back stating that he uh, had no knowledge of it, and if he had had some knowledge of anything of that nature, he certainly would have contacted the uh, town council. And my position on that is that if he was confronted and know that we got a $2 million radio system, one trunk's been down for some time. So the entire system failed when there was a shooting here in town. And also was unable to make a phone call except for the cell phone. And now all of a sudden we got this big elephant in the room along with other things that's happened. And we're supposed to ignore it. When the person who was leading the town was not taking action to protect the citizens and the police officers of this town, I don't see how he can come in in the morning and look anybody in the eye and say, I'm doing a good job, the citizens of town talk. Any other discussion? I'd like some clarity. Are we talking about asking the town manager to resign, which you can politely say no, or and what we discussed on taking a vote of whether to terminate it. Mr. But what is the what is the motion? Please restate the what is the motion? The motion is asking if we can we will vote or we have to as far as council goes for a vote because the unit has to pull the rest of that. That's what I'm asking. Meaning each one of us will vote. Right? <clears throat> And we will say, if it's an anonymous vote, done, then we all are asking for it. That's what I'm asking. Yes. The question was, what was the motion? The motion is for the town manager to resign. You make the motion. And I put it, it's, it's up to the council. Well, I know that, but I'm saying the motion is the motion that you, you, you're asking him to resign. Is that right? right? <clears throat> oh, okay. Let me get some more clarity. If he just says no right now, what is there to vote on? If that's the motion of asking him to resign. I guess if the motion passes to ask him that we'll say, are you going to resign or we're going to ask him? I thought you were finished. It's my turn. I'm going to be asked by the council member asking me if I'm going to submit my resume. Let's hold on to that. Let me get started here. Mr. Mayor. Yes. You know, everybody here has a right to vote if they want to and should. Nobody here has said fire the town manager. We give him an option of going out of this place with as clean a scale as we can go out. If he wants to sit here and continue, uh, knowing that people that are in this audience know what's going on in this town, that he's not hiding things from them, that's his choice. But, uh, I feel like he knows what he said and what he's done is not being truthful with the citizens in the town. Okay, we have a we have discussion. Well, yes. yes. The only thing I want to clarify, you know, I've only been sitting on this board for a very limited time. So, so my information that I know is very limited, maybe to the part of some mm -hmm. others may know. So, uh, you know, some of your issues you may have with some things is I'm not in, as informed maybe as you are for some of the past things. So I can only go and vote from the time I have been elected to sit on this panel until now. So I, you know, I have to make my judgment on what I know now. Um, Yes, sir. Yeah. I, I'd just like to say uh, I would hope that the citizens will wait until we hear all the facts before we make a decision about what is true or not, just because one person will, want, will make some statements or uh, interpret some emails that they think that say one thing and may not say exactly what it is. And I think we need to hear from the people involved 
and in this whole incident before we before we decide to decide that. Excuse me. And I would like to to say that uh, I think I would not vote for that type for uh, asking for somebody's resignation unless I think there was a cause and a reason to. And I still think there would be a blight on his record if we did do that. So so to me, asking him to resign is almost the same thing as trying, as trying to terminate him and we'll, we'll, we'll tarnish his reputation. But when facts are not in, we are here tonight, we hear presentation from others about this particular situation and the facts, and then I think people can make their judgment now. What goes on on the social media and other, other people's personal opinion, opinion, some people got their own agenda, it's a hidden agenda that's been here for ever since I've been on this council. Just withhold your judgment and, and, and then uh, uh, that's what I'm doing. Yes, um, my email to Mr. Thornton, the county manager, um, was in regards I wanted um, a timeline of events leading up to the failure or the dysfunction of the emergency system. Um, this system, you know, it's electronic. It could have went down with any department, not just the police department. Um, and I asked him um, who's responsible. Are uh, there logs of uh, being maintenance? I asked him, um, you know, the chain of command for for that type of information. Um, if it was imminent danger to the citizens of this town, I'm certain that the person responsible for keeping that maintenance should have followed the chain of command. Um, that's what I'm here to find out. Who's responsible for you know making sure that that information, if there was an issue <coughs> in the imminent danger to the citizens of this town, who's responsible for relaying that information and how it's supposed to be responsible, I mean relay, and if there's a report, I, I want to see the report. Somebody have to sign off on things that are maintenance and taken care of for this town, whether it be a uh, police department, fire department, or the um, water department or what have you. Somebody needs to be signing off on information. Um, we have several departments here, and Mr. Thornton meets with them on a regular basis. And so this issue didn't come up until there was a shooting. I have a problem with that. I have managed um, a large company before, had a million dollars before, before I set up on this council. And, you know, the money we're dealing with is not, it's not a whole lot of money. Because one transformer go down to $4 million, you think it's going to stop power or wipe this town out. The recommendation to uh, say 8% of the town's fund in case there's a, a, a disaster, hurricane or whatever, that's only going to sustain the town for one month. After then, we'll be at the mercy of FEMA or God knows what. And <coughs> that known, and I do have an accounting degree and a business degree and a social degree to deal with people in their minds, and that's what I do every day. I deal with people with mental issues, and I've seen a lot going on. But anywho, um, I want the records to speak for themselves, and I believe if we get a presentation, or would the person that's responsible come forward and tell the truth and stop sensationalizing and, and, and fan flames? Because see, I'm the person that I can sit here and have Lucifer on both sides of me, and I respect him for who he is. But you, you, you can't put personal issues with professionals, and I don't want this town to continue to be run by people and their personal issues. If you don't like somebody, that's okay. You don't have to like You don't have to like me. But respect me and respect me for what I am and who I am. Now, if there's somebody up here that can step in the shoes or any of department heads and a town manager, I want you to stand up and raise your hand. If not, to sit here, I don't see the day-to-day -day operations of everything. So to sit here and say the gentleman's not doing, uh, doing the job, I don't agree with that. If there's some improvement, we all can improve on what we do. Okay, and so if there's a recommendation for improvement, then I'm here for that. But I'm not going to go to terminate the town manager because it, it, he's far, it's far better off. And I don't want that to go into what has been because that's history. We're going to leave it there. But it's far better off. And we have had to plan to get to this point. So he has not been stopped out of money. Um, if someone in passing said, you know, you need to look into this situation, that's one thing to say, oh, we're in danger. We gotta do something right now. You know, I don't think that took place. And that's what the comment I made. I was certainly hoping he knew there was any danger to this town because our system is in such poor condition that he would have taken action. And the person responsible for reporting that 
She'll follow the chain of command. She'll have a report. There should be a paper trail for that information. And so, and knowing that there's a lot of, it's not just one system. And, and, and for, you know, information to be put out there, it's, it's more than one system. And you will find that out tonight and how they all work together in unison. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, very quickly, Mr. Mayor, we have been here for about an hour now, and I keep hearing people talk about citizens, and I'm glad that everyone is here. Uh, but we have 11,400-something citizens in Tarboro. The people that are ultimately responsible to the citizens, and when the citizens can really express their opinion, is at the ballot box. If the citizens don't like what we're doing up here, then they should go, definitely. And, and vote us in or out. We have um, a senior power plan that I am looking forward to hearing. But we are sitting here still having these conversations that we had six months ago. We have not come to any kind of consensus. And what we need to be doing is the citizens' business and listening to the reports not only from Mr. Edwards and Mr. Brown, but we want to talk about the radio system from people that actually work with that system for the town of Tarboro every day. I really want the citizens, the next time they go to the polls, to listen to what's going on. And don't necessarily pay attention to people that talk the loudest and sound the loudest and, and make absolutely no sense. We have to make sure that Tarboro grows and that we do everything we can to make sure that every citizen in the town of Tarboro has access to opportunity and so I would hope that whatever that motion is, we'll go ahead and deal with that motion so we can get about the business of the town of Tarboro. Any other comments? If not, we have a motion and a second on the floor for, to ask for the town manager to make some I think that is the motion. Uh, all in favor of the SAI? Aye. Uh -huh. Or raise your hand if I can say I'm sorry. All opposed, no. Motion fails. Based on what what has been said by several people, so this goes in favor. And I'm saying that what was said to me directly by several people. My name's Leo Taylor, L E O T A Y L O R Ward Two, and you know how I vote. Thank you. Mr. Hey, Mr. Direct uh, person you can say one thing. Yes. Um, I'm going to reserve the right to um, have something to say about this. Um, I will say that uh, I'm extremely disappointed that we would jump to mm -hmm. having a closed session with a mm -hmm. some individuals before we actually heard any factual information. I'm disappointed <coughs> that the information that is contained in your packets that you have for a better part of a week details all that information factually, and yet we still sit up here for some of us and try to disseminate untruths and outright BS. Right. Now, after the presentations in regards to this communication system are made, I want to reserve the opportunity to say my piece. I think I'm owed that. Yes. Yes, sir. I'll wait until after the presentation is made on the communication system. I think that's what everyone is waiting to hear. Before we do that, I'm going to pass these out.
Council at this time, waking up again in the middle of the night, not being able to go to sleep, back to sleep. Sound familiar? Searching your heart and soul and you determine that the stress and pressure of being there in the present atmosphere in the town of Toro is taking far too great a toll on my life and it's not worth the effort. So it's with a sad heart that I hear my notice of resignation is there in the town of Toro. I thank the people that voted to put me in the office and I'm sorry I failed you. My goal was to leave the town of Toro and to become a better place to work, play, and live. <coughs> But the opportunity to do these things seems to be an impossible task. Please pray for the town of Toronto. Thank you all so much for having me to serve. Thank you. As Mayor Pro Tem, I will now preside over the, this meeting. And we as a council will come together at a later date to decide how we will proceed henceforth.
and then another call of the same nature, or if a call came in of somebody having a heart attack or somebody that needed help, that dispatcher can't answer two serious calls at one time. So if we're going to do it, let's be serious about it. You're going to have to spend money to do it. If you're not going to spend the money to do it, there needs to be another way of doing this. It can go to the county, turn it over to emergency management, give it somebody. Let's combine them, do whatever you have to do. But let's quit sitting here bickering about it and let's decide what we're going to do and get down the brass tacks and get it done. Because if we're not, all you're doing is you're hurting us. You're hurting me as an officer and you're going to hurt my officers later on. So that's what needs to be done. Councilor Braxton, I, I would say yes, that I, think, I, I don't want to speak all council, but I, I would tell you I think all of our business is, is to make sure the police department has what they need, the fire department has what they need to do their jobs. Safety is of the utmost to all of us. Yes, Thank sir. You for your comments. Thank you. Thank you for all the great solutions, alternatives, and for pointing us in the right direction. We need to try to solve whatever the issues are. Thank yes, you so sir. much. Thank you. <clears throat> Bronson Williams, looking at the best tonight. It's uh, 212 North Main Street here in Stevens Harbor. Right here. Uh, I want to start the meeting off different than what I prepared because tonight, I, in my opinion, it shows the level of non respect that this public body has for the public. And starting off a meeting and immediately going into a closed session and then resuming that meeting sometime in or about 734. When people were waiting for this meeting that was supposed to start at 7 o'clock. There's other times in which you can call for a closed session, do what you had to do, and, and ultimately, I guess, the results of that closed session were not needed anyway. So, again, yeah, a, a total waste. But I, I do encourage the board to respect the public and their time. As, as Council Mantara and I talked about, 11,000 people who you represent. I'm speaking on behalf also of the Edgecombe Tribune. Work for that company along with the van. And it's our goal with the Edgecombe Tribune to promote facts in Edgecombe County. We are, when we're reporting news, our primary goal is to be non biased and share the whole truth and not just part. Our goal is to be objective in our reporting. To some, it's been apparent that we may, we may have some bias in our reporting. So I say tonight to Paul Burrell and his citizens, that it is my immediate task to work on our non-biased reporting so that we'll begin to be our non-biased brethren uh, so we can have a sense of uh, unity in our community. The biggest thing for local news media is to also help enhance the quality of life uh, for citizens in our county. In fact, it represents the whole entire Edgecombe County. To show the positive things that are happening with our youth, to show the, the, uh, un, the, the edited, or not edited, but the uh, audits for the finance department that happened here that they came clean. I don't know if that's ever happened uh, or reported in our paper, but there's a lot of things that have happened in Tarboro that oftentimes are swept under the rug. And it causes discourse in the community. And when a community is divided, it cannot move forward. In order for a train to, to fully move forward, all the pieces of that train must be working together in order for it to move. If not, you're stuck in yesteryear. One of our greatest assets to this organization, such as a public body just talked about, what is unity and a desire to improve the quality of life of the citizens, all of the citizens in Tarboro. And in my opinion, what is detrimental to the town is special interests and vendettas. These things have no place in public governments. Let's be about improving the quality of life of all citizens in Tarboro. Surely I'm about it. Improving the life of people not just in Edgecombe, but Nash, and the state of North Carolina for that matter. One of the things in, the, in my Bible, I'm a Christian. So it talks about helping our brother and our sister along the way. So our living won't be in vain. We gotta ask ourselves every day, what am I doing to make my neighbor a better person? Because if my neighbor's okay, then I'm okay. Let's talk about the town manager. We just voted or tried to vote to ask for his resignation. When, when I look at the town manager, Mr. Allen Thorpe, <coughs> had an opportunity to talk to him on, on two occasions. Uh, one being, I want clarity of this, maybe the, the town attorney can help us with this, and that is if the uh, city uh, governs itself in its meetings by the Robert Rules of Order. Because if, in fact, you do, I, I recommend this board get trained on Robert Rules of Order and how to conduct a proper business meeting. Uh, 
and, and proper motions, and et cetera. But let's talk about the time manager and nearly handling a $50 million a year annual budget. Looking at the conditions of Tarburg from when he started to where he is today, looking at the uh, fund balance that, that's currently here, one man having a whole lot of work. Instead of uh, sending a motion to ask the man to resign, why not make a motion to find some money to help him have an assistant? Someone who can look at these things every day. When, when you look at a police force, they may have daily needs and necessities. This man cannot do it by himself. Perhaps, counsel, we're looking at the wrong thing. We need to be looking at things on how to approve our city and approve it every day. But one thing I do disagree with, and maybe some of the citizens may not like this, but uh, the 9% reduction that you just passed to include the whole 19%, I'm, I'm all about March 28th, I'll be 30 years old, so I don't have that long living. But I, I will say this, that I, I do know that in those, in those almost 30 years, a rainy day will come. It's not always sunshine. So we have to be good financial stewards of our money. And understand, we got to put back a little bit for that rainy day. <laughs> Maybe not the whole nine, maybe to pass on 7%. So that the people, so when something happens, we're not rushing to the citizens' pockets to ask them for some more money because they're struggling. But at least they can budget. We've got to lead by example. We all have personal budgets in our, in our homes, maybe some. And I need more time, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I got you back. I've, I've worked with you in several different organizations here in this town. You're engaged with the people. That's what we want. That's what we need. Okay? So I got you back. Thank you, sir. The uh, Edstone Tribune had a story of, I guess, why you were in, in the tree. Uh, where the uh, stabilization fund had uh, about 99% to put in there uh, to take care of a rainy day. I ate the three day of horse. But, it, you know, I, I was taught to say a little, little piggyback when I was eight years old. <coughs> it, it, it doesn't make sense. Spend money just because you have it sometimes. Just, just hang on for a little while and, and, and think about it the second time before you, so you spend it. I'm talking about you know, giving the money back to the city. We understand. We understood it when you, when you just gave us 10%. So I, I don't know whether you can retract that vote or what, but I think it would be a good idea. Yes, sir. I, I think the citizen needs some clarification on, on that uh, 9 percent. The 9 percent is for uh, uh, price stabilization, so that if uh, due power raised the rates within a short period of time, we would be able to offset that with that percentage. <coughs> but in the interim, uh, what happened was the, uh, the electric cities, they <coughs> had some, a, a windfall, and they had 7 percent. So they withheld that mm -hmm. to do the same thing that we were doing with the 9%. Now the 9% was never meant to do anything but to keep the rates down. As far as the reserve to handle any kind of capital expenditure, we have a separate fund for that. So that is not in danger at all. We do have, I think it's around $4 million set aside to handle anything within the electric department that may come about. A transformer that may go, if it be a million dollars, we can handle it. But the, but the rate stabilization uh, uh, fund, was for that purpose, but since the uh, uh, electric city decided to do it at that level, we decided that it was okay uh, in the best interest of the citizen to go ahead and, and not withhold it to 9% anymore. Uh, that, that was the reason. We, we, we still want, it's still there's something built there to where there won't be a raise until 2020. You see what I'm saying? So our, our withholding <coughs> would, would serve the same purpose as the uh, electric city holding. So it wasn't anything that was, uh, I think, was irresponsible. Just a, um, a, it was not, not necessary for us to continue to withhold that money since we had Lake City already do it. <coughs> and we do have money in a separate fund for any kind of capital emergency. <coughs> just an explanation.
Listen, not, 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 we won't get into a back and forth. I'm not going to get into a back and forth. You're still on the call. No, it wasn't an opinion. I'm just, I, that's why I wasn't giving an opinion. I was giving an explanation as to what. what I, I, I appreciate that. Okay. I appreciate that. But, uh, okay, so you, you explained that you have a reserve fund, right, for the to place transformers and poles and things months. like that, right? Okay. Uh, now, it picked, you, at first you were looking out for the citizens uh, in the, you know, with the stabilization fund in case uh, the rates went up. Okay. So I understand that since, since uh, that decision was made, that, elect, that uh, uh, Duke said that they weren't going to have an increase, right? Is that correct? They weren't going to have an increase in the electrical rates until 2020? Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, huh? What? That's not correct. Duke did not say that, no sir. No, Duke didn't say that. Who said it? Electric city. It's saying that they're okay. not. Okay. Right. Uh, we, we'll get this straight. Okay. 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 I don't want anybody to hold Duke back on Duke progress to say that they definitely did not say it. So, you know, that's, that, 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 was, that was my concern is that, you know, maybe we could have used some of that, that money that wouldn't be used for, for the race stationization. Uh, you know, that had to uh, to give us the money back because of the, uh, because of the what the uh, electricity said that they weren't going to have any rate, rate increases. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I use the stock market for an example. You know, it's, it's up one day, down the next. Do we have any reassurance that there's not going to be any increases before we uh, uh, give the money back to the city? Otherwise, we're going to end up taking it back. That is unfortunately not. Um, because there could be another invasion of crime here, like we had the year before. We just don't know. There could be something that take place in the Middle East. The prices go back up. All this is based upon a large part of price of natural gas. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying. I'm saying. We don't know if that's the best information we have. <laughs> However, if we do, then council will be having that conversation uh, about uh, the, the need for an increase here for the town of Tarboro and its customers. Thank you, Ms. Wooten. Well, are there any more citizens with requests for a petition? I want to make a quick comment. Uh, Daniel Williams, uh, 400 Northern Boulevard, Boulevard Tarboro, North Carolina. Uh, of course, everyone knows that I'm your outgoing police chief, but I wanted to personally thank the citizens uh, for your support. And uh, uh, over the last um, four years, and the overwhelming response that I've gotten since I've announced my resignation has just been amazing. And I never in my years thought that response would come. But I want to thank uh, members of council for your support. Um, I see former member Owens who supported department for quite a few years in whole, uh, who has also done the same. And if I miss somebody, please don't uh, hold it against me, Councilman Ruffin. Uh, but most importantly, Alan, for giving me the opportunity to serve. Uh, we know that this has not always been an easy process, but uh, I'd like to think that together we've done some great work along with the department heads, and I thank you all as well. Uh, but once again, Council, I thank you for your continued support. And I ask that you take care of men and women that work in this department. They work hard every day. It's not uh, that's the topic being on there today. We need to see the support. So thank you again. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. Are there any others? See, seeing that there are none, we have no matter scheduled for a public hearing. And now we can get on with the presentation of council. Mr. Anthony Evans and Mr. Watson Brown, please come forward to. Discuss the sanctuary of Scarborough Action Plan. Watson is not with us tonight, but he's an integral part of this plan. So, all we have a copy of the plan, I'm sure you can take a look at it. It's presented to you with the um, package presented to the tree. Uh, 
together, this also can include the form or not. I'm a concerned citizen, resident of Tarboro, businessman. I've been in business here for 14 years. I love Tarboro, love the community of people. And I think it's time to move everything forward. Uh, we, we, we've seen a lot of, of things happening tonight, and I think a positive light coming forward is, is the way we want to go. This is basically a redevelopment plan for the revitalization of our town. It needs to be expanded on greatly. We started initially with a simple four theme, and, and we have read, and I hope some of you have, that a strong central business district is what solidifies the town. If, if you lose the central core, you lost the town. That's it. And so we started with this, and we went through some ideas that you know, asked different citizens and different people what they thought, what, what they did to make Tarver better. And so basically, you know, what we end up, I'm proposing is, and I've asked in a letter also, that we have a special session of council to go through the plan, and each each council member go to their ward, talk to their people, come back together, and then each person present you know, what needs to be added to the plan so we can have a total plan for the town. I don't want the town to think, oh Lord, we're trying to spend a bunch more money because that's not that's not the plan. But what we want to do is find grants, find government resources, lobby politicians, any way we can do it. If everybody else can get fifty million dollars in Rocky Mountain to build a building, I want to have that same opportunity. So I don't want to kill it if we can't find the money or we can't pay for it or, you know, come up with a negative and kill it for whatever to start. Uh, there's hundreds of grants that can, that can be received, we can qualify for. Uh, I know there's a lot of people who don't understand the Main Street program that we just used to get a great grant to help build a tall brewery. And there's Grants out there right now, thirty fifty thousand dollars for redevelopment of the uh, waterways and the uh, river. Uh, another half million dollar grant that's available for downtown businesses to be funded, startups uh, or existing businesses. So the main point is this is a plan. All it is is a starting point. Take it from here. It's, it's a gift. Worked very hard on it over the past year and a half, and. I think the, the biggest action we can take is to have a work session and identify in that work session we're talking about our current planning department, how many additional planning staff members they would need. I think it's crucial that they they get one or two more people to help write grants and to be able to, to work on all the aspects of I mean, it's building permits, it's all kinds of things. They're going to need assistance. So this is a gift to the Tarver to the council. And it's just an idea to be expanded on. I want to say that enough. Don't read it one time and think, oh, they, they, they didn't include something. That was not my intent at all. And uh, thank you all for your time. I just got one question. You have a number of these things, just like the Edgecombe County Memorial Library. Yes, in combination with Carver. How involved is at this point, are the county commissioners aware of this plan and, and or the discussion has been has been had with several different commissioners um, just to make sure that it was even a viable thing. It may be voted down, and it's you know it's a cost of money. So, you know, but discussion has been made with different individuals around town just to make sure that we had a spot out of support to do anything. Uh, I think we have a proactive group that is going to look at this and say, well we can't do this but they can apply for a grant to get new street signs. You know, there's you know, new ownings on, on some of the buildings to, to give back to the business owners that work so hard in there. So there's a lot of different things out there that can start working that, that can be done. And yes, that's the, that's an item that has been. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you, sir. It is the effect of the council to at some later date have uh, a town manager look for a time where we can come together with the authors of this plan and other stakeholders and have a work session that will be up to the council. We have a couple of work sessions coming up, so it will be sometime I'm imagining April at the early. That's the pleasure of the council. We can direct the town manager to 
to look into those things so as well. Um, so take care of yes, sir. Will this? All right. All in favor? Yeah. <laughs> All in favor of that uh, motion?
This is actually just a photo of, of what we're talking about. The top piece is that sand on top. That's what was just completely new installed. The, ES, the ESX is right beneath it. That's what's on the uh, platter to be uh, replaced. In regards to the E-901 Center, we also completed an upgrade of that back in February. Now that was a complete upgrade. Uh, that was using 911 surcharges, not budgetary funds. Um, that included uh, uh, upgrades to the servers, all the workstations, uh, replaced all the vital hardware and software for the 911 communication center, included new mapping technology, uh, which added additional layers of uh, mapping to our system, uh, included a new 36 month data screen, and also it, it made us now compliant with next generation 911, which is still kind of coming on the horizon. Uh, we're not really prepared for that yet because there's not a need. Uh, that's going to be something where uh, you have multiple PSAPs or 911 centers uh, serving as backup centers for each other. So we could actually be serving as a backup center for somebody in Buncombe County. Uh, that's, the, that's the direction that's it. Uh, we've also implemented Texas 911. Again, there was no cost to the town on that. That was something free of charge. Um, all four of the major carriers, Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, and U.S. Cellular, are now on board with that. So now all of our citizens who have cell phone service uh, are able to text to all PSAP and receive 911 service. Um, the last company was actually just implemented last week. Um, it takes a process and they're responsible for that. But the process originally began about six months ago. But it's now completed. Uh, this is actually a uh, user interface of our 911 system. Um, so when you look at where 911 call comes in, this is what the dispatchers are looking at. The right side is, is uh, actually our TTY communications. That's where our text and the 911 comes into play at. Um, this was a uh, new user interface as well. You see that here in another photo. Uh, this is going to actually be the primary components that were replaced during the E911 upgrade. Uh, these are going to be all the servers, all the switches, all the routers that were replaced. Uh, and again, that was not due, uh, coming from any kind of uh, town budget. This is actually going to be a depiction of what the dispatchers are looking at. Over to your left is going to be the actual 911 console that was replaced. Uh, the top right display is going to be that new mapping system that we referred to uh, that offers the additional new multiple layers. Uh, over to your left on the top is going to be the uh, user interface for our radio system. And the two bottom monitors are going to be uh, two monitors that are used for other applications such as our records management system, our computer-aided dispatch, uh, and those kind of things. Just an overview. Now, as an extension of our actual physical E911 center, uh, the town has in place what we call uh, mobile uh, dispatch as well. So each one of our patrol vehicles are equipped with mobile data terminals. On those terminals, you have this software called Vision Mobile. Vision Mobile is a dispatch center in itself, so they're able to uh, respond to calls for service straight through their terminal. They can dispatch themselves to calls. Uh, they receive that information. I've got a picture I'll show you. Um, but uh, that has been upgraded within the past six months to the latest version as well. So now all the cars on the road have the latest version of this mapping or, or this particular software. This is a depiction of what uh, the, the officers are viewing in their patrol vehicles. This is just one screenshot of, um, of the multiple uh, uh, interfaces that are capable on this system. Uh, if you look over here to the right, you'll see dispatch query, message center, the mapping. The message center is an application where they can communicate between themselves, they can communicate with the E911 center. Uh, the query, of course, is where they obtain uh, sensitive data uh, through the terminal. The mapping system uh, also updated that. Uh, while I was updating this particular uh, application. So now they have different views where they can instantaneously see uh, where they're going at different areas of the town. Um, and then of course there's more to it for that. As an extension of the Vision Mobile, naturally it takes mobile data terminals to use that application. So we, in the process of the 12, past 12 to 6 months, we've been replacing those mobile data terminals consistently. Uh, over half of those terminals have been replaced in that time period. Uh, we've gone to a newer version, a, a one that's kind of consistent with industry standards. Um, and we've specifically looked at the specifications for these uh, that has increased memory, it has a, a different disk storage, so it all offers the officers a little bit more efficiency for those mobile data terminals. Uh, that means they can 
contained or full of multiple applications all at the same time without having to, to minimize or anything like that. Um, all of our telecommunicators are now, now certified through the uh, North Carolina Sheriff's Office Training Standards uh, Commission. Um, they had to initially go through training, of course, and then there was a lengthy process to get them certified through the Sheriff's Training. The only reason we opted to go through sheriff's training was because they do not add such to the uh, North Carolina Justice. When did that take place? That took place, actually started in uh, somewhere around mid 2014 when the training took place. I just received final confirmation on my last dispatcher uh, that she received her general certification last month. So it's, uh, like I said, that was a very lengthy process to obtain the general certification. Um, we're also obligated by uh, statute to uh, institute a backup system for our E911 system. Right now, what we have in place is what we call a light switch. Uh, for whatever reason, if our communication center goes down, uh, we have an actual physical switch that the dispatchers can flip, and all 911 calls are rerouted directly to the Fishman County Sheriff's Office. Excuse me. Um, yes, ma'am. Is that what has to be done in the that, that, that'll be related to the radio system. This is strictly like telephone communications. Um, but all that traffic is going to be routed to the Ishcombe County Sheriff's Office. If for whatever reason that switch fails, we have a redundant plan where we can call what we call the knock center and they can do it physically from their location. Um, so that's all possible. So far, so far as the backup itself, we are in direct communications with the Ishcombe County Sheriff's Office. We're looking to serve as each other's backup facilities. Um, those negotiations have already started. Um, town officials, Mr. Thornton, the county manager, uh, the chief, the sheriff, everyone is involved and at the table on that. Um, the plan is actually in place. The only thing we're waiting on is data from CenturyLink uh, to actually put in the, uh, the dollar amounts. Uh, again, the majority, if not all of this, will be funded from 911, so that will not uh, you know, be possible to maintain. The is the, the night switch is just a small little device that we're able to switch and the 911 calls themselves will be routed to the camera. Um, that's paid for by 911 as well. Uh, remote services, we've also been, uh, uh, installed the, uh, the ability to, uh, to repair things remotely. So what's happened here is I've designed a computer where regardless of where I'm at, I'm able to tap into the town of and the domain and make any repairs that are needed. So if I'm out of town on training or whatever else, uh, if something goes down, I can immediately get in. If I'm not able to fix it, then of course our vendor can, can get in there. Hemming projects, uh, we're looking at a KMS server. Uh, that's uh, in essence, uh, that's going to be something where we're organizing our uh, Microsoft Office licensing. Uh, right now, we just kind of realized that they're a little afraid, uh, so we want to pull all those together. Um, it's our understanding that the infrastructure for this is already in place. Um, it's just a matter of coordinating with our IT vendor to, to get the uh, necessary keys put where they need to be. Uh, we're also looking at cloud disaster recovery. And that's what I was referring to earlier about those NAS devices. The NAS devices can be considered like a big external drive. Um, that's what we have in place right now for our, for our disaster recovery. One is located at the police department, the other is located at the fire department. Uh, that way if we have a, a, a catastrophic failure at the police department, we still have the data saved at the fire department. In lieu of that, the only downfall to that is if we have a catastrophic failure, then we will have to acquire the equipment. We have the data saved, but we still would be down until we acquire the equipment to get back up in operation. Um, the, the, the cloud disaster recovery would eliminate that. Um, that would be something where we would be down for a maximum of two to three hours, and then virtual servers would kick us back up and would be more <coughs> operational uh, without any downtime. That is something that we're already discussing with our IT vendor, and that will more information come at it on that. Uh, police department, uh, since we're discussing communications, uh, we're always looking for ways to communicate with the public. Uh, so we've uh, installed the infrastructure for communicating digitally uh, throughout our lobby to the public and coming in and seeking different information. Uh, that is in place. Uh, the, the infrastructure is not the final version. Uh, there's a few more uh, peripheral devices. Our video storage, uh, given the nature and climate of law enforcement right now, naturally, uh, video is going to be a big topic. Uh, we already have the Bayview cameras, the white cameras in place. We're working towards uh, going back to in-car cameras as well. Uh, 
there's a cycle for all that. That data has to be stored. That's where the original sand that I was discussing comes back into play. Uh, that has sufficient disk space for us to be able to do this now. Uh, I've already got the system for the body cameras network. We just have to kind of bring it back around to the sand and, and introduce them a little bit more uh, chrome uh, that, That's just going you know, to a quick depiction of how it's going to go. Your, your in-call video camera is transferred wirelessly to, uh, to access points, which I've already uh, installed. Then it's done to the server and saved and controlled uh, by, by other workstations. Before I pass it off to Lieutenant Hale for the radio, are there any questions about anything that I just offered? Uh, I know I rushed through it and I apologize for that. Yeah, like when you kept saying upgraded, I can get upgraded up and get upgraded. That's right. No questions. No questions. I'm sure what you gave us is in this document. So maybe we will have questions. That, that yes, sir. That's, that's a lot more detail than what was on the screen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
The first one is the control, and the other four are for the voice traffic that comes across. So if you have four people talking on the radio at the same time from uh, uh, other departments during the day, if a first, fifth person keeps up and tries to talk, they're going to get a busy signal until one of those channels are free. How often does that happen? Do Very rarely for four. four, four if, when it's all up running for four, it would be tied up. So that, that's a yeah, there, are, there are times when we have major power outages and stuff like that, that you can't get a busy signal. But for basic day-to-day -day operations, this, you know, it, it suffices our needs. You know. To better explain trunking a little bit, trunking is a system developed to best use on a limited number of radio frequencies. One radio frequency is used as a control channel, and four other radio channels and frequencies are used for voice. Each time a user talks, that control channel picks whichever uh, other channel is not being used to let that person talk. Um, so, you know, what, what the user, when the user stops talking and starts again, the control may switch that user to a different one the next time the talk, whichever channel is, is free. Um, so if you had a scanner and you placed it on just one of our radio frequencies to listen to what we were saying, you would only get broken parts of that communication due to the fact that it may go to another frequency the next time you talk on it. So you may get the police department the first time on that channel, and then the next time you may hear something from the electric department or the fire department. So you wouldn't get the whole conversation because it just assigns you whichever one is free. Mr. Mel, uh, part of the understanding I have, and I'm not saying it's an issue, I'm only saying is it part of the issue with the situation that might have even happened, but as far as the use of this system, we have the police department, the fire department, and the Every department, department we got has, uh, is on this record. And, and, and would we be, in your opinion, more effective, more efficient if we just had on this particular system the police department and fire department. No, sir. Okay. I think it would suffice to have the whole town on the okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, reference to radio system failures that we have, you know, when we first purchased a radio system, no doubt it was the best that they made at the time. Um, the, the biggest issue that we've had over the years since we've had it is the connectivity with the T1 line. And the T1 line actually has nothing to do with the radio system itself. It just provides the connectivity between the police department and the tower site. Uh, when those issues happen with the T1 line, we have to call CenturyLink, and they come in and fix it, but it puts over down for a long period of time. It doesn't take long for them to get it back up and working. And in the effect, when that happens, it only knocks the console off that the dispatch is using, so they're able to take a portable radio that's in the dispatch and talk to the officers on the radio. It's only stopped the communication between the console and the tower side, not the portable. Okay? Um, other issues that we've had over the years is just due to mother nature. We've had lightning strikes, we hit the tower out there and fry the equipment, you know, but fortunately the uh, the radio maintenance person that we use in Marathon now, um, he's here in town. He's just down Main Street about a mile or so and He's always quick to come out and respond and fix these issues when we have them. I have never not called him that he can respond promptly and, and get our system back up and running. Um, <coughs> the thing we're running into now is that the system is out of, out of support for Motorola because it's at the end of life. So in other words, Motorola doesn't produce any more parts for this radio system that we have. Um, the city of Rocky Mount has the identical system that we have. And they are in the process of, uh, of replacing their system at this time. And I've been in talks with a gentleman that's in charge of their radio system. And what they're going to do with their old one is they're going to place it in storage when the new one is up and running. And he's told me that if we need any parts, and you can hold that slide right there, isn't it? if we can get any parts that we may need that they have, of course we'll have to pay for them, but there's some parts available from their system if we need to prepare ours. In the meantime, before they get their uh, new system up, mm -hmm. what are we going to do with Paul during that time? Well, you know, there's other municipalities around the state that have had the same radio system. So the gentleman that does our maintenance is over there. Matter of fact, back in the summer, um, we had a lightning strike at the police department that fried a board in one of the servers, and he found the part that failed to fix it. 
you know, so he has resources that he can reach out to and also try to find the parts that we need to prepare. Now, how much of a delay is that system repaired? Well, we had to go over that circle. You have another lightning strike and it thrives. Right. But that particular incident there, only one console was down because it was on, only affected one, so we had the other one that was up and working. And it was down for about a day or so. He didn't kind of turn around and get in the park, get back here and back up in the day. Yeah, but there is no guarantee that that part is out. That, we that have to find that part right. in breaks now. Until, until Rocky Mount finishes there. Let me ask you this. How long has that uh, system been out there since, since they stopped making At the end of the firmware, uh, when the support ran out at the end of the firmware, when we bought that in 2012, we bought us extra time on the support. December of 2015. That's what we yes, we discussed it, yes. And it was actually put in place in uh, 2012, but I think we ended up being invoiced on somewhere around July of 2012 after they completed the work. Okay, so my, my understanding like 2012 they quit making parts for this particular system? They didn't quit making it then. We did a firmware upgrade that buys extra support because we upgraded all the cables at the time. But there is no other upgrades out there. It's just at the end of life. But when that software was bought, we knew right then that we were going to have a radio problem. Well, we knew that we had a, a, a certain amount of time. system that we could fix if we needed to. Well, we knew we had a certain amount of time before the support would run out. But now, we're in a position that if other people had to take a step and get a new system, and Rocky Mountain wasn't good enough to let us get far, we'd be basically out of the radio If it failed, yes. Um, let's see. To address what uh, happened on February the 16th this year, when the, we, this is, matter of fact, this is a shot of the tower. The equipment at the tower is elevated. The big cabinet is the trunk controller, and the four small ones there is the left little bit are the repeaters. Okay. Uh, uh, what I heard you saying was that Rock uh, Rock make it more convenient for the big parts, but those parts are already existing in other cities. Well, maybe some, 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 some cities, some, some cities, cities have it. Yeah, some cities were. Right. Why not actually make it more convenient and available for us to kind of have it? Right, due, due to the fact that our systems are identical. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're in the process now of installing all that stuff. I don't know what the timeline is on that, but it'll be, it'll be soon. Technically, they wouldn't give theirs up and keep their systems up. Oh, yeah, because they're still operating all their old ones right now. But that, that, that serves the purpose that, that they're, they're having the same issue we're having. Uh, we're all in the same boat here. Anybody who is not upgrading to the new system uh, is in the same situation. Um, so they're, they're slightly ahead of us with proposing the upgrade because of the expansion, of course. But uh, we're already proposing the same plan to the council at this point. Let me ask you one more. The new system, which we're going to have to. This old system that we have. Do you need to use to it anymore? I mean, can it well, back up, back up? Well, what, what would happen with, with what we have in place is this equipment here, like the main controller and the front uh, controls, would have to be replaced. The console that the police department would have to be replaced. The improvement in this is, uh, and I was had this after I finished this here, but uh, since you asked the question, I'm going to answer it. We have T25 capability, which is in our mobility, so we can talk to other agencies. In case something like a forward happened again, we had people come in here to assist us. Um, the good thing about putting in the new system is we would be able to eliminate the T1 line that's maintained by CenturyLink because we now have fiber out of the radio tower side. So we would use our fiber as a connectivity between the two uh, entities, the police department and the tower side, and that would be less likely to have those issues that we've had with the T1 line of the past. Yes, sir. Oh, you know, backed up by the bike. That's, uh, I was headed there. <laughs> the, uh, the failure that we had on February the 16th was multiple failures in the other three uh, trunks that were that were working. And he was able to use the one trunk that was down, move parts from that, and repair the other three. They all up working fine today, just like they were before this incident. In 2008, the Howard Patrol came to the town of Toro and wanted some available tower site, tower space that we had out of our tower site to install their Viper network. 
and their Bible network is statewide, and it allows for statewide connectivity. And in exchange for us giving them that tower space, they gave us three talk groups. There's one for police, there's one for fire, and then there's a, an event channel that we have, the electric department uh, radio program, so that they can talk on. So in the event that something like this happens again, the protocol that we put in place with our portables was to switch over to the Bible system and be able to communicate with one another via the Bible system. The only thing that we lose is the ability to calm out the, the volunteers because we don't have that connectivity between the console and the tower side. But the Bible system is, uh, is there for us and that's the protocol that we we'll use in the future until we're able to, to remedy the, the issue of replacing this uh, radio system that we have. So the Bible system is used today in the shooting network? No, it was not. We were, we were in the process of getting it done because we realized we weren't expecting all that to go down. We never had that happen. But we, were, we did get some videos up on Bible, so we were able to talk. And then about the time we got into place, he was able to bring the whole system back online, so we just switched back to what we had. Right. Okay. So the system was only down for a short period of time, contrary to It wasn't down very long. Uh, and while this was all going on, you have the dispatcher still dealing with 911 calls coming in. So we have, we have multiple people, uh, including myself and my others out in the field, and uh, the piece out there are trying to get to dispatch to ensure that she has a secondary person working with her as well. So it was a very chaotic scene. It's, it's a lot of moving components in this. Uh, and this happens almost every time you have a, a, a hot scene. Uh, you don't have a lot of moving parts and moving components. And people, people go to work, they go to a specialty. So people went, they did what they had to do to make sure that everyone was safe that day. The, the federal standards that are put in place now when purchasing a new radio system is that P25 standard that I've given you in the handout that I've talked about. And basically what that means is the ability to, to have interoperability between multiple agencies uh, with the radio system. It's, it's the standards that have been accepted uh, on the federal level and you can't buy a radio system used for public service like we need to do without it being P25 equipped. Two things, based on an email we received tonight, town manager was made aware in 2012 that the radio system pension we were on. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. I have a question. Ask a question. I, really I just did. No, you made a mistake. Did you not send an email to the town manager to discuss the radio system in 2012? We got it here in our back. Let's read it. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. We're not going to do that. We're going to let Lieutenant Hale finish his presentation. Well, I'm asking him a question. That question has been asked and answered, sir. No, Lieutenant Hale, will you please come here? No, Lieutenant Hale. Lieutenant Hale has the floor. The next question is this. We have let ourselves get in a position that we are now accepting new parts to try to sustain a town of 8,000 people that need to have an upscale, updated radio system that was not planned for when it should be. Is that the way? It wasn't good in the capital outlay project to be able to replace it at the end of support. And we, we do have to, I mean, we do have to utilize the fact that using parts from another municipality, but they are out there to, to help us keep ours up and running. Should we need them? That's, that's the emphasis we have to do if we need them. I'm going to make this one for more. I've got an email in my hand. Detail on March 13, 2012, 438 p. It said, Good afternoon. If it's convenient, I would like to stop by and see you either tomorrow or Thursday in reference to our radio system needs to be upgraded. I mean, that's what this said. Y'all sitting here telling me it, and it didn't say it. That, that is not yeah. uh, Lieutenant Hale, at some point, we're going to ask you the question, well, what are our alternatives now? And that is what I think we all, <laughs> yeah. as, a, as a council, would like to hear. I'm not interested in, in placing blame. At the end of your presentation, you said we have to get this replaced at some point, and we will ask you uh, what steps do we have to take. Yes, sir. And uh, the Councilman Brown has a It's just a little bit. Uh -huh. you have to switch over to the light. Yes, sir. How much time is it to transfer over? It's very, very, very quick. It's just about turning the dial on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Yes, this is another challenge right there. We were waiting until the officers from the board of actors moved into the radio channel. They were going to move to the property. Well, if it, it fails and they try to use it, then we'll be able to get some type of communication to them out there via a cell phone or you know, whatever we need to do. The mobile data from them also will be sending them a message to the division mobile that is down and you need to switch over to Viper. And so they'll, they'll get it. Yes, and thank you. So they will automatically move it. They will automatically move it. Right. Let me say this, uh, if I could, Councilman Brown. There would be no difference if, if the new system went down, it would be the same, same aspect. Uh, if we had an electronic issue go wrong with our new, our new $2 million system, for example, it would be the same same process that would need to be utilized. Uh, so, ultimately, you know, you're going to have electronic failures from time to time. Of course, we try to do everything we can to mitigate it, but uh, you will have, this is the technology we're talking about, computers crash. Um, white strikes, all kinds of things go wrong here. And what we try to do when I began to discuss this radio system in the retreat was begin to let it rain. Um, prior to me coming to the retreat, the department heads and I had already met. I have already spoken with Adam, Lieutenant Hale, and, and myself, along with uh, uh, Sergeant Webb. I've already talked to Lady Brownwood to try to replace the system. Um, I think the perception has been that, that the system, we let the system get beyond its repair, and that's not true. What we start to do is lay the groundwork for a very expensive capital outlet project. Um, of course, there are multiple needs in the police department today. We know that just based on me setting before council over the last couple of years. Um, but I want everybody to know that I would never, nor would Lieutenant Hill, uh, Sergeant Webb, the town manager, or any other member of this council allow our officers to be placed in any kind of danger because our radio system fails. Um, there are some things just out of our control, and there are some things within our control. Um, I, I will bring up the fact that, of course, every single time I've come to ask for an upgrade, there has been a lot of contention. There has not been easy. We try to lay all the groundwork early so that when we came to the council, we were well prepared to answer any questions that, that were proceed. But before we get even to that point, the grounds will have already begun. Uh, and that created even more turmoil for this project. So what we want to do is really let you all understand that, yes, we have an aging system. Yes, our system is at the end of its lifespan, uh, just like your car would be at the end of 16 years. But however, if you can find a certain parts of your car, you can keep a 1967 Chevy on the road for 32 years. <laughs> you might not want to, but you can. What we're going to do is, is let the groundwork now so we can begin to replace our system. We want the officers to have the best of the best that we can in, in the field. But it is an expensive venture. And we're, we're, I'm optimist, but I'm a truthful person as well. This system is going to be expensive. But it's one that we're going to have to undertake. It's not a police department issue. It's an entire town issue. The fire department, the electric department, public works, we're all on this system. Of course, we use it probably most of the fire department behind us. But all in all, this is a town, such a town project, not a police department project. <coughs> My question is, it's not just that town. Yes, sir. But as a city, Absolutely. I've got people sitting there. Absolutely. People sitting out here, they want to know which I like. If the system does go there, you know, it may not be a police life today, right? It may be my life That's today. Right. So if, if you had to convert to that type of system, I would know, want to know, and I'd like them to know how much time it takes. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. Let me tell you, they need to feel safe. Absolutely, absolutely. They need to be in for their safety. And, and, you know, as the chief of police, I want to make sure these guys are safe. I mean, I was at the scene that day myself. So it, it's not a good feeling to know that you don't have communication. However, you, what you have to do is put redundancies in place to ensure it doesn't happen again. Can it, something else may happen next time, you know, with our system. It's, it's an electronic piece of equipment. The things that failed were almost, almost unavoidable at, at a certain point. I spoke to Mr. Lorenz myself, and he told me that there were three completely separate failures in three separate different trunking systems. And I'm, I'm going, is that normal? It's not by any means. So, you know, uh, something is unavoidable. Uh, I'm proud of the way the men and women dealt with in the police department that day. I'm thankful to God that everything turned out great. Uh, but I can assure you and promise you that these types of things won't occur again. We had a system go down before. Not in the same manner, but it went down before. And we lost communications. How you deal with that, you put a redundancy system in place. And that's when he was talking about the four rules and we had the talk to talk kind of challenge. So, um, like I said, we're trying to let the groundwork so the council has a full understanding of what is needed to replace the system so that we can move into the future. Thank you.
I guess the million or two million dollar question is when will we hear when, when are we going to get a recommendation that we need to move forward with whatever the next step is to make sure that all of these folks have what they need to protect them to protect the citizens how, how far how far down the road are we before we're going to get that to say move forward oh, great well, we have that i would already say ready to present to out at this point, uh, but it, you know, it's, now it's not a little bit. <laughs> you hear the stuff he's talking about, yeah. and you heard the stuff that Sergeant Webb was talking about. Some of it is kind of mind blowing. It's a package you know, that, you, that you might have to, have to carefully read through uh, that lays out everything. Uh, but uh, I would argue that, that that would be a very, very short time frame. We have something else. Uh, yeah, reference to Mr. Taylor's question. Yeah, we, we're working on putting that together now. When we give it to Mr. Thornton, we want to make sure that we present y'all with the facts of how we can not only, not only that we need this money to buy, but maybe some resources of how we can get this money and work with that system also. Um, I'll quickly fin finish up on the new part of so I can address what Mr. Knight was talking about. Um, the, the new system also has backwards compatibility. In other words, if we had an old analog radios which were gone for digital, it would, it would work with those analog radios. And it gives us the ability to, to encrypt our, our conversations. So if there's something that we're working on that we don't want somebody to hear on the scanner, we can encrypt it so that they can't hear it. You know, basically that's what it means. And I touched on the infrastructure and equipment that would have to be replaced. So uh, to address what Mr. Mike was saying, you know, we do need to move on replacing this radio system. There's no doubt about it. Um, as far as cost goes, it's going to be expensive somewhere in the neighborhood of around $2 million. A way to offset some of that cost is that the consulates that said inside the dispatch can we can use E911 to replace those two. That's just a small piece of the pie. Okay, but we can use that money. I have also been in talks with Motorola and they they have a leasing program out there. Uh, there's zero percent interest. Uh, you can lease it. I think it's a three, five, and seven year plan uh, where it's kind of like doing a capital outlay thing. But it would be a lease to own deal so that at the end of the lease that we would own the radio system. Um, I'm also in the process of going through Motorola to see if there's any grant funding opportunities out there that we may be able to participate in. And if there is, they will assist us in writing the grant to help purchase the radio system. Um, but the, and the other good thing is that the radios that the police department have, the radios that the fire department have, and the radios that the electric department has will work on a new system so we don't have to have that expense of buying those portables to replace them all at the same time when we put this new system in place. Um, Thank you. Let me ask uh, Lieutenant Hale, would, your best guess, and I don't want you to rush anything. Yes, sir. Will you have all of that information in that package available to the time manager by next no, we, we have the, the uh, quote, we have the, the leasing that they offer, uh, and I have heard, I have sent some email on the grant funding option, but I have not heard back from those yet, but the, the E91 side of it is it's listed on their website that we can pay for this console, so yes, he can have that you know, in a very short period of time. So we can have everything that we need uh, at our next council. Hopefully, yes. We have essentially a proposal for Motorola. We might have that conversation that um, honestly I think that we need to have about uh, any questions that management may have in regards to that proposal. But that's the next logical step in all of that. Before we come to this council and have that greater discussion about necessity and funding and timing and all those types of things. So like the Chief said, there are a lot of moving parts with this system. Um, the recommendation of an expenditure of $2 million is not something that we take lightly. Um, we want to feel completely confident in what we are presenting to this council because $2 million is um, nearly half of what you have in the front balance in the general reserve plan. That's a significant undertaking. I mean, it really is. You've seen all the other needs that we have, and uh, I'm not making light of the fact that you know, we have the available funds to do that. But I think it's our responsibility to make sure that what we're recommending to you is something that we feel confident in making that recommendation to you. Because after hearing all of this, I hope that what council has gathered is that 
what you have is a technological advancement challenge. That's what you have. Um, technology has advanced and has created a challenge where these components are getting outdated. Um, that's what it is. The system works currently. We have a backup to that system and we have the availability to find components to maintain that system and keep it working. However, it's age and it's a technological advancement issue. Just like you replace a TV that has a giant console <coughs> and a big screen 65 inch TV. It's the same kind of thing. Um, however, it's our responsibility to bring that information to council. That's exactly what we were trying to do um, at the retreat uh, when all of this disintegrated into something else. So uh, I'm glad that you've provided the opportunity to my staff to present this information to this council and to the public who really needs to hear this and who really needs to hear the facts of the information because they were hearing a lot of stuff and in my opinion it was unfortunate what was thrown out there. I think a lot of people were given a lot of information that made them care or have concern for their, their personal safety. And to do that is quite frankly unforgivable in my opinion. To do that and know that the facts are something else is just absolutely wrong. To me, that crossed the line. Uh, I've sat up here for four years and been accused of a lot of things, been called untruthful, been accused of mismanaging this town, and a lot of other things, and I've tolerated it because, quite frankly, that's what I'm trained to do. I have nearly 25 years of experience, and, uh, you know, Am I proud that the town has improved its fund balance to 41.02% to 6.53% at the time that I got here? You're darn right I am. Why would I not be? The town's reserves are at the strongest position that they have been in 10 years. Um, during my time here, the town's not raised taxes. We've not increased water, sewer, or electric utility rates. And in fact, the town has reduced its electric utility customer rate by 19% across the board. And in that same process, paid off more than $90 million in contractually obligated utility debt. <coughs> but amazingly, there are still a handful of people who would try to lead the public to believe that all this is a bad thing. I believe that the people of the town of Tarboro are a bit too intelligent to buy into this propaganda, and that they understand that a strong financial position and having ample reserves means that there is a greatly reduced likelihood of future tax increases and that establishing reserves are in fact the town's contingency plan to deal with unanticipated expenses and emergencies like what you just heard. Am I proud of these accomplishments? I ask you, should I not be? If you served in my position, would you not be? So, yeah, I'm, I'm a little ticked off this evening about having things written in somebody's blog or their Facebook page, but have no idea what the heck they're talking about and attacking me. Because, um, quite frankly, that stuff's out there for my kids to see and my wife to see. And I don't take it very long. And that's why I'm having this conversation this evening or making this statement tonight. For nearly four years, on the second Monday of each month, I sat up here and been subjected to being un un called untruthful and other various allegations, including how the town is mismanaged, along with a new conspiracy theory that's been brought forth nearly every month. I have witnessed toxic effect and the dysfunction that this has created affect the town staff to the point where two of the town's brightest and most important members of the management team grew tired of the constant attacks and decided to take their talents elsewhere. I've now seen two mayors leave because of that same, same thing. Mm -hmm. Until now, I've not publicly addressed this toxic environment because my nearly 25 years of service as a Professional municipal manager has taught me to refrain from such things and to maintain a higher standard of public decorum, while understanding that there will always be unhappy, negative individuals who only seem to take pleasure in negativity and trying to make others as unhappy as they obviously are. I find that I can no longer bite my tongue and you laugh if you wish that the latest conspiracy theory here in Tarboro, perpetuated by a few individuals who, in their rush to play gotcha, have misinformed the public and made very serious allegations that irresponsibly would both the public and the employees of this town believe that their personal safety is at risk. It's not only just plain wrong, it's irresponsible, dangerous, and quite frankly, unforgivable. 
This council was provided with documentation, and the public just heard a presentation by members of the town staff who are the most involved in and have the greatest knowledge of the status and condition of the town's communication systems to convey that not only is the town's Centricon plus CRT console communications infrastructure currently operational, but that there is a backup to this system via Viper, and that while staff is performing the necessary and proper due diligence in researching and determining the most appropriate, reliable, and affordable options to upgrade this communications infrastructure, we have the capability to acquire any components associated with the current Motorola Series 2 Centricon plus CRT console communications infrastructure from a 15-mile neighbor to the west, the city of Rocky Mountain, amongst others in the state of North Carolina. I say again that this misguided attempt to attack and to blame someone, rather than constructively and collectively discuss and address the issue at hand, has crossed the line. Not only has this latest personal attack added to the dysfunction that is witnessed on each second Monday of the month, it has now unfortunately moved into the realm of this toxic element has purposely undermined the very fabric of public trust in the government that serves them by making irresponsible statements and disseminating misleading information that is intended to inflame and inappropriately scare the public we serve. I'm calling on counsel to end this latest misguided wish up and to address the dysfunction, discord, and negativity in its ranks to more effectively govern and provide the insightful and intelligent leadership the town of Tarboro needs to obtain a brighter, more progressive future. I call upon the public to let its leadership know that you expect better from those that are supposed to lead and govern the town of Tarboro. Ask yourselves, what purpose does all this serve? And I think that once you fully understand the motivation behind all this negativity and personal attacks, the truth is quite the eye. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Manager. If Mr. Councilman Wood, I remember uh, uh, Councilman Burnett had his hand up first, okay. so I can recognize him. Well, uh, uh, Lieutenant Hale, uh, Chief, uh, we're talking a five, three, five-year payment plan, correct? And how long would it actually take, if we said today, we said, bye, how long would it take to get it installed? And after these five years, just say we use five years, then would this system that we were talking about buying, would it be outdated or close to being outdated? And we've got to rehash this whole thing again? No, in, in the handout that I did on the, the new the B25, it tells you it has the backwards compatibility. In other words, it is there for, for future to build on. In other words, when we put this in, going forward in the future, it's going to be a system that's there for us in the future. Also, because of the way it's constructed. It's got to be a lifespan. Right. And, uh, and just the same system that Rocky Mountain uses? Yes. It's the same system. That's exactly what they, mm -hmm. they're purchasing and having installed now. So it would be the same, same way we could, if something would happen, there would be a lot more parts and we don't have to get them available or somewhere. We get it real quick. But you know, the, the, the life uh, expectancy of this is just as long as the one we just had. You know, keep in mind that we got well, 16, 15, 16 years out of that one before the end of the support. So, yeah, we'd be good for a, a real long time of support. And given the fact that it is built for moving forward in the future, the support would always be there for that, that system. Okay. Um, yes. Um, I want to say, uh, um, you asked about having to prepare for April. I would hope that we can give the town manager time to do a thorough investigation, look at it himself, and you keep it in touch with them before you all make it to council. Yes, sir, thank you. And once I said that, I looked at his face, I, I knew that April might not be right. Because we want to make sure as a town that we get this right and to make sure that our citizens are safe. Are there any more questions for the... I, 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 want to say one yes, sir. I hope that the citizens got a better view of what's going on. I, I, I'm impressed with all the intricacy of this system, communications, the telephone system, radio system, and there have been numerous upgrades through the years, uh, numerous efforts to try to keep the system working. They developed and learned from uh, this particular incident that we're talking about to put redundancies in place, and uh, what I'm hearing is the system is safe. But once in a while, just once in a while, everything goes wrong and makes things uh, uh, 
uh, tough for us, but they learned, and uh, I think they have a system in place that they feel comfortable uh, to work with. I haven't heard anybody say that wasn't the case, and I think they continue to improve the system. And we do have to wait until we get facts on professionals before we make our decision about one or two things that go on. So I'm hoping that that will shed some light on. I'm really impressed with you guys, what you all have been doing, and how you all have been working to try to continue to improve our system. And I do trust that you all will uh, continue to uh, put forth a plan that we can uh, put in place. And I do know that, Chief, while you've been here, there's been many, numerous things you try to upgrade. And I do recall, and I don't know of any exception, that every time you try to upgrade something, there's been negative comments and criticism. And I, I do recall saying, thank you for bringing us into the 21st century. And I know that sometimes you all hesitate to come before us because uh, there's a lot of criticism, a lot of awfulizing, a lot of I got you and that kind of thing. And I'm very sorry for that, but and I hope that we'll change and we will uh, we'll, we'll get better stewards of what we do here. And I, I want to thank uh, the mayor for his job. I know it's been very stressful for you. I know it's been very, very hard. And I'm hoping that we as citizens wait, wait, give for the people that know what they're talking about. We we'll stop this, uh, this, uh, Social media stuff that goes on, and, uh, and, and, I, and I just think we got we got to do better as a town as a whole. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Okay, I need a motion. We can move on to the town manager's recommendation. Um, need a motion for the consent item. Motion that we approve those. Motion that the mayor the second. All in favor. First of all, let me ask this. Does anyone need a short break in the bathroom? Okay. Right. Would it be okay if we take a quick five minute recess?
you have a back seat shooter, you would buy the hood from uh, 56 back to 74. Yes, sir, it's the revision that, that is the. Is that how much the equipment is? 249. Okay. The 56 times another equipment. The 56 times already included the original budget. Have we seen a bid on this equipment? You have not seen a bid. We're utilizing the precursor organization that is allowed by general statute. It's essentially where um, the third party bids certain pieces of equipment. Um, to be honest, just about all equipment is available in that manner. This price is actually below state contracts as well. This is one of the right. this is one of the state contract. But this is one of the things that, that I brought up when we discussed doing things in a proper fashion. The purchasing agreement and state staff states anything over ninety thousand dollars has to be presented to be. Now piggybacking I understand the state state uh, contract I understand. But that, that's why do, why do the dollar purchasing agreement from the state statute say if it's over 90000 it has to be brought to Council? Council, we've been through this before. Um, but I have, there are some exceptions to that. Then we back, as you mentioned, state contract, as you mentioned, in that. But it don't say state contract in our purchasing agreement. It, say, it states any item over $90,000 must be brought to Council. And it references the deal. statute that allows us to use. Where does it say? It says just the formal bid process was set forth in the statute 143-129E and other provisions of law, such as procurement procedure, procedures applicable to some of these exceptions are set forth in section 5 of the policy. Now, I would like to add to but that. But I purchased, but I actually purchased. Item 3 is State of North Carolina Purchase Contract. The finance department may use the State of North Carolina Department of Administration versus the contract division, et cetera, et cetera. And the one thing I'll add to that to, to hopefully make you feel a little better, we don't just go straight to the state contract. I went to multiple vendors and got multiple prices and using all of these areas. And, and this state contract price is the lowest price and they can deliver in a, a more but, but my question the the state my, contract is not the My question is still is that the former council voted to approve a purchasing group. Yes, sir. That anything over ninety thousand dollars would be brought to be a good We we are bringing it to you. This this is the state contract pricing. Where is it? Our purchase is it? contracts, our purchase policy allows for these of state contracts according to page six. Let me, let me say it just a minute. The first two policy I remember didn't have any exception. Um, That's the one that was created. Right? Yes, sir. I was thinking so you did get no bid. Yeah, we did receive formal pricing from other vendors as well. We have the quotes uh, for different manufacturers uh, using multiple person programs, including the NJPA, which is a national one person. But I think the second contract the council, the council will because you ain't going to be the next time. Uh, I, I, you know. I, I can't bring the quotes if that will help. Uh, I still make a decision. But, yeah. but it's not even just something here. Um, we can do whatever council desires. Well, I'm just, I'm just asking. And we understood that the retreat that the council was prepared to move this forward due to the fact that the previous wheeled excavator or motor excavator, I believe, had been damaged beyond the point of its usability and that the necessary nature of this piece of equipment as far as the ability for staff to do its job, I'm not with then, the we, then we were the given the authority to move forward. I'm not quite That's what we're doing. I'm just saying, you know, if you've got to be made by Yes, <laughs> oh, all right. This, this is April 8, 2013. It said purchases ninety thousand dollars above to acquire form B. It said right here we respect you purchase at least purchase of apparatus, supplies, material, equipment expected to require expenditure equal to or greater than ninety thousand dollars in construction on the pay work requiring the estimated expenditure of five hundred thousand dollars. The town shall comply with the provision GS 143 129 and other applicable statutes as well as the following procedures. And it states that uh, it must come before the council for approval. That we have to approve anything over 9,000. And, and yes, sir, that's what we're doing now. We've been following But we've not seen it. We've been following our person policy. We are also following the statute that allows for exceptions to the $9,000 for the rules. I've never seen a bid. 
we, we did not get this, sir. This is where you're utilizing the exception to the home planning process that allows for purchase off the state contract. That's two different things. That's what I hear you saying that um, you, you are coming here to ask our permission. Well, this budget amendment, without it, we can take no action. It, yeah. it reads the budget amendment is needed to afford the insurance proceeds, necessary yeah. fund balance, and the corresponding replacement of equipment. So this is your approval. Well, so you are coming for council there. We're just saying you need to accept them to get the three million uh, across the state, the state statute. It's right. according to our purpose and policy and general statute. Okay. okay. Well, Captain Shea, let me get some time from you that. All right. We got a town attorney right now. We should have a problem. I'm putting you on the spot. Yes, sir. Are we legal? Yes. Well, thank you. Well, why did we vote and this thing says to have no proof of the view of the thing the resolution will be submitted to the finance department? And a bid is always being you bring the information, you show it more than one person bid on it. It says the public's notice must appear, the electronic mail must be sent these 14 days prior to bid over. And and we don't do that and it says uh, must be approved by capital. Either the particular contracts or all contracts. Why, why, why does the wording in here say that and we don't do it? That, that, he, that, he, wording, he if I may, that wording is almost verbatim from the general statute. Right, it is. And then the policy goes on to incorporate the general statute, which lists multiple exceptions, one of which is the state contract bidding person to proceed with the state needs to be called out. Uh, there are other exceptions as well. We've gone over this in the past, but it, it is permissible. But it states in here that you may use the uh, state contract. That don't take away from the approval of the ninety thousand dollars or more, because that what me says that says to me is anything the town wants to purchase over ninety thousand dollars, we don't even need to be concerned about. Yes, sir, we, we cannot make the transaction without their approval. But we don't have any equipment. No, sir, we're utilizing the state contract pricing. This is great. Uh, uh, so yeah, I, think, I think the question has been asked and asked by several people, not only our department heads, but uh, more importantly by our attorney that we are following the law. It would be proper that someone would make a motion. I make a motion that we approve. Second. Motion has been made properly. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 No. All opposed? No. Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Um, next we have memo 16-17, uh, which is in regards to the team of the board of the contract for all of these services. On January 12th, 2016, uh, our request for proposals for all of these services <coughs> to 11 area certified public accounting firms. Services being requested included auditing the town's financial and compliance records for 2015, 16, 16, 17, and 17, 18 years. Using a single bond concept of preparing a capital, which is a comprehensive annual financial report that conforms to the GFOAs, which is Government Finance Officers Association Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting Program. Proposals were received from three CPA firms. The purpose of the audit, as we all know, is that financial audits play a vital role in helping to preserve the integrity of public finance and maintain citizens' confidence in their elected leaders. Audits provide independent assurance that financial information is reliable. And transparency and accountability in government is essential to show that public functions are being carried out efficiently, ethically, and equitably. equitably. Uh, the evaluation of the auditing services were that each of the three auditing firms that responded to the request for proposals is qualified to perform a municipal audit and have the ability to assist in the preparation of a comprehensive annual financial report. The firm's references were contacted and their complete client list were reviewed. Based on the summary of tax, it is recommended that the council award the audit contract for the fiscal year 2015-16 to Petway Mills and Pearson PA proposal cost of $27,240 with the understanding that the additional two years may be subject to negotiation and require future capital approval. The mayor would be authorized to sign the necessary contract with the approval. You have a uh, breakdown of the three companies that responded, a uh, comparison of cost, and also a comparison to the cost of being paid for the previous Ms. Mann, do you have anything you'd like to add in regards to the proposed policy contract for the town talk? Um, just to note, we, we did fill out the packets, as I said, of 11 um, different firms. Um, the 12 firm was included, but um, I actually had contact with them prior to knowing the packets, and they expressed they would not be able to perform all of this year. Um, the court responded that they were going to reply to RFP. Um, we received three responses by the deadline. And I summarize those there. Um, Rising Associates of 
means to make sure that mm -hmm. means there are actually the laws that are great. Or we use the lab or best option. Yeah, it would be proper that we have a motion made to approve the audit contract. So yeah, moved. Second. Um, motion has been made and proper. Second, any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Just as a matter of comment, uh, three years ago, this same firm submitted uh, a bid, and it was $4,000 less than the firm we just had. And we took the other firm over these people. And we were told that these people were more qualified to do it. I'm wondering now why we accept it. I was not involved in that. I know you won't, but this, this firm is the same as the other firm that was going to save us $4,000 a year, three years ago. And the firm was going to pay through it. It brought me in the open and up and up, and we could have saved $12,000 over a three year period. I'm just wondering why in three years. All of a sudden, this firm now is okay, but three years ago, it won't. I will say that in the last two years, um, this firm has started dealing with um, an outdoor entity that has electric systems. That could have been a side factor. I don't well, know what it was. Well, as I recall, at the time, the comment was made about they weren't doing things outside, and I asked what the population had done. And, and I was told about 10,000 people. And we could have saved money at that time. I mean, it's just a curiosity that they're okay now, but they won't okay now. I, mean, I don't have a problem with them. I just didn't like that comment because so that's what happened. That comment is duly noted. Uh, there is a motion on the floor to be properly seconded. All in any further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Moving to memo 1618. Uh, we have a resolution for the disposition of a fixed asset. This is the John Deere Field Excavator that we talked about recently. <coughs> Um, town of Harbor has a fixed asset, which is an asset, fixed asset accounting system number 778 from the Public Works Department, uh, which is attached to the name that you have, for this position via sale by auction of Netherfields.com. The asset, which is a 1990 John Deere 595 wheel excavator, uh, was unfortunately involved in an accident and has been declared a total loss. Recommending the council consider the approval of the attached resolution for the disposal of this asset. We have a resolution. We can so move. We have a resolution. Motion has been made. Second. Proper second. On the table, we have some discussion, Mr. Captain Warren. Now, when we sell the piece of paper, and the money we get for it is going into general fund or for the Oh, uh, it'll actually have to go back in the Powell for an hour. Powell will for an hour as soon as it comes. That's where we're reversing people. Okay. Anyone okay. else? All in favor? Aye. All food? Yeah, I've had it. Moving to memo 1619, we have a room of housing code enforcement issue that is in 709 Edmonton Avenue. On September 29, 2015, the town's building inspector inspected the above reference dwelling unit uh, owned by Michael Suss, the building to be excuse me, unfit for human habitation. On December 17, 2015, following the required hearing, an order was issued directing the owner to repair and demolish the structure within 30 days of this order. The order expired on February 12, 2016. To date, the owner has failed to comply with the inspector's order to repair and demolish the structure. Recommended the council adopt the inspector's ordinance, giving the owner 30 days to comply with the inspector's order. If the owner fails to comply with the inspector's order or fails to enter into and abide by an agreement staying the enforcement of the minimum housing code, the ordinance authorizes the inspector to remove or demolish the building of 709 Edison Avenue and the cost of such to be a lien against the real property. We have a copy of that ordinance attached. Staff is here to answer any questions the council has in regards to this continuing issue. Um, it would be proper that uh, we have a motion. So moved. Second. Motion has been made. We probably second. Any discussion? <coughs> no discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. We have Willow 16 20. 
which is the need for appointments to the historic district commissions. Uh, term for this would be Dean Hughes and Shannon Wilson. Uh, set to expire here at the end of this month. Both Mr. Hughes and Mr. Wilson have expressed an interest in serving their term. Uh, it's recommended to the council appoint two individuals to serve on the commission. Uh, four year terms will expire in March of 2020. Right. Does any member of council have any other names they would like to present? There being none, just by acclamation, can we approve the two seven names? So moved. All in favor? <coughs> the ayes have it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In, in this information that we will give right here about uh, reallocation of the park and procreation, they won't own the action item. We're going to discuss those. Yeah, we, we, have, we have to report those to council. Yeah, the but don't, don't we, when money's moved, don't we have to vote on it? No, sir. As part of the budget ordinance, the town member has authority to move funds within the same um, within the same fund. If it's referred within the same department, it has to be reported to council within 60 days. If it's moved between departments within the same fund, it has to be reported to council within 60 days. Within the budget. Or the next council. Well, if some large sums of money is being moved, and I look like people need to know exactly what it's for, yeah. Let me get to that. Is that something that you want to bring up when we go to the council? Well, I, I thought this would be a proper time to say it was a council. Well, but it's not an action item. I think the proper time would be when I call on you. Okay. Have okay. Well, I have a question. All right, Mr. Town Manager, do you have any? Just a couple of things. Um, first of all, um, I want to thank Chief Williams for his service to the town of Carborough. Uh, this will be his last council meeting with us. Uh, Chief, I hate to see you guys. I understand the reasons and why. Um, I want to say thank you again. Uh, and I wish you your family well. Thank you very much. Second, I'd like to remind council of a special work session uh, that is scheduled for at this point in time next Wednesday at 6 o'clock here. Um, I would like to request the council officially at this meeting tonight, since this is a public meeting, you can do so, um, accept that, which means you provided public notes. Um, so if you would, would do that, then we have provided plenty of public notice. Um, we scheduled that to have conversation about the proposed salary and pay plan. Would it be the consensus of the council that we announced publicly that we will have a special work session to discuss the pay plan study on March 23rd at 6 o'clock in the council? <coughs> All right. So that has been... I don't even know if we have to vote on it. Yeah, well, we not have to provide a date. Anything else? Um, the only other thing that I'm going to say is I believe that tomorrow is election day. And get out there and vote. <coughs> Mr. Trump? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, don't, please don't forget we do have a brief closed session to discuss the settlement matter. It won't take but a couple of minutes. I think appreciate you all sticking around after your council updates. Uh, I am planning to attend a municipal attorney's conference later this week at the UNT School of Government. And if I learn anything uh, from recent updates, I'll forward that on the council members as well. Nothing else at this time. All right, at this time I don't have anything. And we will start with the council member from Ward 1. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you, Chief. <laughs> Wish you well. It sounds like a great opportunity for you. I know you're a man for the job. You do a great job. I think it's been great knowing you and uh, carry on the spirit that you always have. And I think you do well. Thank you, sir. Board two. Yeah, just two things. I want to uh, say a big, uh, great job doing to the uh, utility spark of the LED lights on uh, Pine Street. Uh, fantastic. A lot of light. Really looks good. 
Uh, I mentioned a couple of sessions back that at some point I would make a formal request about a four-way stop sign on Wood Street and Pound. I don't know what exactly we need to do here tonight, but whether we say we will have this as a public hearing at our next session, uh, but I do want to get it on the agenda, whatever we need to do to get a four-way uh, stop sign. Uh, police Department's done a great job at this point with uh, <coughs> some real visibility over there. Um, Pine Street is seven-tenths of a mile. Um, about half of that is right in front of my house and several of my other neighbors. And like I said, I'm passionate about this. Uh, I really get ticked off when people drive 45, 50 miles an hour by my house. There are people pushing baby carriages, walking dogs, and I'm out there in the morning walking. And um, so again, whatever we need to do to make it a, a formal request for you to make this happen, uh, I will make that recommendation. Mr. Manager, will you come to that? I am doing so right now. Thank you. That's all I got. Four three. Oh, yes. Okay. Number one, I'd like to apologize to our council members that I put you in a position. But being that an idiot I am, I have a council meeting. And then I got talked into making that motion about the town's money. It was not on just the radio system. It was on other, several other things, which is uh, personnel situations. And I prefer not to speak of it in open session. And other than that, I want to feel what Mr. Wooder said about the chief. Chief, totally understand. Great opportunity. Endeavors of will. And uh, you've done some great things here. Uh, I think the citizens, some citizens appreciate it. And of course, the people who put me up with it, they don't have it. So. <laughs> Chief Williams for his time served here in Tarbury and all that he contributed and looked for a lot of success where you're going and may God bless you and uh, keep you safe in, in all that you do. Uh, I have one, one thing I'd like to bring up and, and uh, I don't always have a problem with this but sometimes I do and I don't know if there's a problem with all this just the way you always done it, but I would like to see the agenda being sent out Monday instead of Wednesdays. At times there are some things in there that I really would like to be able to uh, research and go over, and usually you only have two days, you know, what I've done to get a little bit of money, but it would be great if you had more time on some of these issues to, uh, to get some more information and be able to do uh, you know, make a good act of voting on the information. Uh, and I don't know how you know, you to be able to vote on it or, or something. If you have time to be able to vote on it, we'll uh, have that conversation tomorrow at our staff meeting. And I assume that this is kind of traditionally always been the way that it has been done. I've been here it's almost five years ago. I've been trying to figure out an electronic version on Tuesday that has the actual cover page of the agenda with the items with the um, supporting material to the to 
you all the factual information, and I thank you all for, for all you want to go and get grant um, money to lessen the financial burden on the town. Um, and I thank the town manager for not resigning tonight. If you are doing an awesome job, I know everybody can improve their jobs. I know in my job I can make improvements as well, and nobody's perfect. And uh, <coughs> Continue to make sure my business here is professional, not personal, and I just want to count my other council members to the same. Thank you. Well, seven, I, I want to echo to the other department, to all of the departments. You guys are an outstanding job, and I can guarantee you this as a council, as an elected body, we will do better and we will do our job to support you in everything that you do for the betterment of the citizens of Tarver. Chief, you were our police chief, but you also became my friend, and that is never going to end. And I thank you for what you have done, and I wish you luck in the future. Thank you. I'm sorry, I, I got some questions over here, so I got some comments. On the uh, purchase power wholesale page for the $21,000, thousand views and subscriptions. Special service of twenty thousand dollars and they can close thirty two five. What is that for? A lot of that has to do with the cost of service study and the continued cost of service study with the additional rate changes for the electric. Well, did this have anything to do with the presentation that you made by the gentleman about the ten percent of that percent? I mean it's it's all related to that company and their cost of service study. So we paid him thirty two five for then a no, sir. No, sir. There are other things in that line. How much do we pay them? I don't know. I'll hand out a little bit for you. I would like to know. All right. The next question is, the generator name, what generator is that and what kind of name? <laughs> That's all of them together. I mean, you, you, you've got 10 generators that we take care of. It's just things that's happened by any one in particular. All of them together. On the last page, the PWW slash WWTP capital A has been approved transfer of $40,117. I'm not sure if you want to go into that or not. He has told me to get out of his office. He has basically 
acting like he didn't want to talk to him, he was talked down to him. And for him to get him to make a statement about great lying and people trying to destroy things and do things, anything that you want to ask me about anything I've said at any time, I'd be more than happy to prove to you that I've got facts for it. And the people that believe that you can distort facts and make them into what you want them to be, that's your position to take. I take the truth over the distorted facts and I'll stick with the truth. And in the future, if anything comes up that I know to be truthful, I'm going to stick with the truth again. I'm not going to let somebody make light of my ability and interest in the town of Carl, where I've lived here for 65 years, to set up anywhere outside in here, new to me, to face anything on Facebook. You can say what you want to about me. You're not screwing me personally. But if I came up here to stand up for this town, which I do, and I've got proof that what I say is true. I do not want to be called a liar and told that I've distorted facts. Thank you. It will be now appropriate that uh, someone make a motion that we go into closed session for the general staff. I second. Transformer Site 7. It will be Board Transformer Site 7. 